All right, so today I'm gonna let you in on a secret of uh, fixing cast iron here. What happened is I bought the strobe press like a few years ago and um, it was fairly inexpensive. And today as I clean up around it, everything is kind of shaky. So as I look down closer, you can see there's a corner missing you can also see that there's a crack there where apparently the cast foot broke looking at the crack it looks like cast iron if it was cast steel it probably wouldn't have broken if it was cast aluminum it wouldn't be rusty so I'm not even gonna bother spark testing it I'm fairly certain we're dealing with cast iron so in my opinion there's two ways to do this either heat everything up, do everything hot, uh, then post heat it, bury it in sand or wrap it in ceramic blankets or try to do this as cool as possible. So my goal is not to even unbolt this machine. What I will do is I will take a grinder with a cutoff wheel, just clean some paint up and then I will be using the stick welding process in order to weld this back on. I'm going to try to do this as cool as possible gauging at the material thickness here this is about 3 16 the flange is about quarter so what we'll do to keep the temperature low I chose a 3 30 seconds rod this is a rock mount Jupiter so rock mount makes a line of um, repair repair rods repair alloys I I call them gypsy rods. They, they don't really comply with any AWS standard, but they work real well, designed for the maintenance welder. And no, they're not paying me, and yes, the shit is really expensive. The reason why I use some of their products is because they really work, and they work great. So on a 3.30 seconds here, uh, they're suggesting to run this DC reverse polarity, which is DC electrode positive. Um, 60 amps and um, the way how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use my little pulse stick welder and I'll be setting this to 60 amp peak with like 1.2 Hertz and um, that gives me about half a second of 60 amp and half a second of 30 amp that gives it a little bit time to cool and solidify the puddle. I'm going to make a couple short runs, short passes, trying not to put too much heat into it. And um, typically this works really well. So let's see what we're up against and how it's going to turn out. So the position of the ground clamp there, you kind of want to move this as close to the material where you work as you can. The other thing is, whenever you weld on some moving parts, where this table here swivels and pivots and goes up and down or on a hydraulic cylinder you never really want to weld through any moving parts or moving joints so as I start welding I will move the ground clamp like right down to the base or on one of the concrete anchors to um, shorten the distance that the current has to travel to um, prevent arc burn on the on the moving joints So I'm going into the regular arc welding mode. I have my stinger on the positive and um, going down to 60 amps. I will give it a tiny bit of arc force, about 10% pulse frequency at 1.2. And then the hot start for the electrode 10% hot start.
So here it is in all its beauty or not so much beauty. For a cold cast iron weld it looks reasonably good. Is it the perfect bead and stack of dimes? No it's not. But it's not cracking as it's cooling and if we look at the if we look at the drill press nothing is moving all the movement is in the base here it's holding up it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do and it was cheap and it was easy and it was really effective to fix it that way so hopefully you guys can have just as much success welding cast iron it's not all that tough